she left the Dales last month in dramatic fashion after making an astonishing revelation. In just a moment, we'll be chatting to Sally Dexter, who played Faith Dingle, but first here's a reminder of why she's one of Emmerdale's most legendary loudmouths. Mm -hmm. For a penny. Without noticing that you two need livening up a bit. Oh, look, Emmerdale's own killer granny. Push a sick old woman to a post. To I think I lost my virginity behind that tree. Mary Moses, you move fast. I'll do. They're trying to help you. They are kidnapping me. Beat yourself! Get back, get back, get back. Get back. I'm not the easiest person to love, I know. Can you let me try to start making it up to you? And you're still wondering whether I'm a fairy godmother or the Wicked Witch of the West. Oh, and Sally <laughs> joins us now. Good morning to you. And it's funny, actually, when she says that, I'm not the easiest person to love. Actually, over the time that she's been in Emmerdale, people do have an affection for her and they do slightly love her bonkersness. <laughs> well, I certainly did yeah. and do. I love the programme, but, oh, it was lovely. Oh. Had a great time, yeah. Well, yeah. you mean, you've had yeah. some amazing storylines. We'll talk about some of them in, in just a moment. But Faith was involved in the revelation that Moira's Dingle's toy boy lover, Nate, was actually the estranged uh, I mean. son of Moira's husband, Kane. Follow that one. And, and, <laughs> and, and you were pivotal in that storyline. Yeah. So explain why you had to go. Explain myself. Yes. Yes, well, I had been keeping this secret. I knew Cain had had a son. He didn't know he'd had a son. And um, because of my domestic abuse situation that Faith was in, mm -hmm. um, she tried to protect the, the mother of this son and Cain from Shadrach, who was very abusive, very racist, mm -hmm. and persuaded... Kara, the mother, to move away with her son mm. and not have any contact with Kane. So she was really complicit in what happened after. She didn't realise that the son was going to take revenge on not having his father in his life. Yeah. And so were, do you think that she sort of believed that the moment all of these truths came out and that, you know, Kane discovered the truth, that in some way he'd sort of fall into his mum's arms and it would all be sort of happy. Did she say I that? think she really did. Or that. hoped, at least. Yes, it was that feeling that if he knows the truth, he'll know that I did it for the right reasons and it'll all be all right between us again. And knowing the truth, we can move forward. Mm. Um, and that's but not the case. Quite... No. Well, I mean, you, you have, uh, have left. You say it was very emotional, those, uh, those final scenes. Yeah. But you would love to go back. Oh, who wouldn't? I mean, it's sort of irresistible. I do feel like I've left family up there and yeah. we're still in touch and they're coming down to see me in, in the, um, the show and stuff. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, I do think it's so peculiar, but I kind of feel like I have a son and a daughter, a granddaughter and several grandchildren, yeah. yeah. great-grandchildren. It feels like that. Well, she's yeah. been a character of firsts because uh, the first woman in soap history to reveal the scars of a double mastectomy, and yeah. that was uh, the Bridget, Bridget, I think it was. Bridget the, Coles, uh, yeah. yes was the, well, the model that, uh, that uh, stood in there. Um, big, brave move for Bridget. Yeah. Um, and, a, and, and an important storyline for, for you. Absolutely vital. Bridget was incredible. She was very keen to, to do it and very proud of her body. She looked great. She's in better shape than I, than I am. But, uh, you know, it was, she was amazing. And yeah. people were stopping her in the street. Men yeah. were stopping her in the street. Yes, they were, and saying, I saw that and have got my wife to go along. You know, it, it sh should be... We should be united in, this, in the mm. fight against cancer, particularly. And she got to push Kim Tate off the balcony, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there yeah. have been some br brilliant moments. Oh. Are they, I mean, is that one of your favourites, I imagine? That must have been... Pushing her over the balcony? Yeah. <laughs> well, you love Claire, <laughs> off. don't you? <laughs> yeah. Really, really do. Yeah, she's great. She's great. Um, what you're uh, what you're doing now is actually another first because um, we've talked about some of the things that you've done within Emmerdale. Um, everybody knows the Christmas Carol. Everybody knows the story, yeah. and um, and we see Ebenezer Scrooge, and we always see Ebenezer Scrooge in a certain way, mm. but not. Now, not anymore. We don't. Yes, she is. She. We've got her as the wife of Jacob Marley, 
So Ebenezer Scrooge died. Uh, di he died. Well, in, in the original story, Fan Scrooge dies early yes, in right. her life. And we have Ebenezer Scrooge, my brother, dying early. And, um, yes, we then have her marrying Bo uh, Jacob Marley. Yeah. And that is how the story... He dies. And so and she takes over the, the, the business and then she, she becomes does. the sort of miserly Scrooge that we know, but, uh, but just in, in but a different In way. order to survive the Victorian world that she lives in, mm. with all the restrictions that women have, you kind of see the up-and-comingness of the women's revolution mm -hmm. in this as well. And, of course, it's a revolution which hopefully liberates everybody. Well, it sounds like a hell of a show, as it's got spellbinding magic, it says. Yeah. And so... That's all I'm saying, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have, have, um, have you, have you uh, got any singing to do? I, I might sneak a bit in at the very end. I don't know about that. But we have an, 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 an annoyingly talented group of people around me. Stephanie Street. Yeah. And uh, the most extraordinary writer. This is the most challenging thing I think I've ever done. Mm. And the most... Possibly the most exciting. But you've Amazing. done, I mean, you've done lots of theatre previously, haven't yeah. you? So is it nice to be able to sort of, you know, as much as you love Emmerdale and you say, I you know, do, it's a and I love theater, the filming. To be able to dip into both, both things. That, that's the dream. That is the dream. Um, I, I was kind of thinking, gosh, going back to theatre, it's going to be, it's, oh, it's going to be so much easier. You've got all this rehearsal time and then suddenly you do it and you think, yeah. oh, it's not that easy. Yeah. It's not that easy at all. But I've been inspired by some very great people, one of whom I believe. You are very keen on. Who's that? Judy Dench. Dench. Oh, Judy yes. Dench. Yes. I was her understudy. Were you? I was her understudy. Tone and Cleo. Mm. That's what Tone we and Cleo. Tone and, yeah. uh, Dan in Tone and Cleo. And when she got her damehood at the National, we all leant out of the windows in that little quadrangle bit and went, There is nothing like a dame. Oh, wow. and we, all, we sang the whole of that to her. And she it was is just... fantastic. She is fantastic. Yeah. She's fantastic. Um, thank you for coming in. Lovely Christmas pleasure. Carol opens Enjoy. at Wilton's thank Music you. Hall on the 29th of November. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Very much. Thank, thank you very much.